Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our practice questions, here is a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS will be conducting its target prelims crash course from April 30th, 2022 and we will be live on our YouTube channel from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. and this course will be free of cost. So please do subscribe, get notified and watch these beautiful lectures delivered by the distinguished faculty members of Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started. And look into the first practice question. Consider the following statements. The parting power by the governors of the states is immune from judicial review. Article 161 bestows upon the governor the power to grant pardon in a case relating to capital punishment. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article in the Hindu makes a reference to the parting power of the governor under article 161. When we speak about article 161, it speaks about the governor of a state shall have the power to grant pardons, reprieves, respites or remissions of punishment or to suspend, remit or commute the sentence of any person convicted of any offence against any law relating to a matter to which the executive power of the state extends. What does this mean? This means the state has the power to make laws in the state list as well as in the concurrent list. So if a person is convicted with respect to one of the laws, then the governor would be able to pardon him in those areas with respect to state list as well as the concurrent list. So it is not only the state list, but concurrent list is also taken into picture. When we look into the first option, the pardoning power by the governors of the state is immune from judicial review. This is a wrong statement. Why? When we speak about judicial review, it is the power that is given to the High Court as well as the Supreme Court to review the decision of the governor. So he is not immune from the judicial review, but he is susceptible to the judicial review as well, which means that this particular power which is given to the governor is not the role of the governor, but instead he has the cabinet which will provide him the aid and the advice. This means when the cabinet is taking a decision, this should not be arbitrary. There should not be any discrimination. But what if there is consideration with respect to the religion, caste or political loyalty? In that case, if the High Court or the Supreme Court senses that there is discrimination, in that case, judicial review steps into picture. So the pardoning power of the governor is not immune from the judicial review. So the first statement is wrong. When we look into the second statement, Article 161 bestows upon the governor the power to grant pardon in a case relating to capital punishment. This is a wrong statement. Why? That is because if you compare the powers of the president and the governor, the president has the power to pardon, reprieve, respite, remit, suspend or commute a death sentence but when it comes to the governor he cannot pardon a death sentence which is why the second statement is wrong since one and two are wrong the answer to this would be none now let's look into the next practice question with respect to attorney general of india which of the following statements is are correct president of india appoints a person who is qualified for the post of supreme court judge he has the right to vote when he participates in the proceedings of the indian parliament as he is part of the union executive he can practice privately too as he is not debarred from private legal practice which of the statements are correct the answer to this is one and three only why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Attorney General of India. When we look into the first and the third statement, both the statements are right. Yes, it is the President of India who appoints a person who is qualified for the post of Supreme Court Judge to be the AG. So the first part is correct. When you look into the third statement, yes, he can practice privately too as he is not debarred from private legal practice. Third statement is also right. But when you look into the second statement, he has the right to vote when he participates in the proceedings of the Indian Parliament as he is part of the Union Executive. This is a wrong statement. Why is it a wrong statement? The second part of this statement is right. Yes, he is part of the Executive. But even if he is part of the Executive, if he is attending the Parliament, he is not given the power to vote. Since he is not given the power to vote, the second statement is wrong. There are other important facts with respect to the Attorney General. The Attorney General is part of the Union Executive. He is the highest law officer in the country. He can be part of any court in the Indian Territory and he has no right to vote when he participates in the proceedings of the Indian Parliament. 
Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement. According to Natya Shastra, Odra Magadha is the earliest form of present day Odyssey dance. Tribanga is closely associated with Odyssey. Which of the above statements is our correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Odyssey. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, according to Natya Shastra, Odra Magadha happens to be the earliest form of present day Odyssey dance. This is a first statement, right? Second statement says, Tribaga is closely associated with Odyssey. This is also the right statement. So what is Tribaga? Tribaga happens to be this particular posture. So Odyssey closely follows the tenets laid down by Natya Shastra, facial expressions, hand gestures, body movements are used to suggest a certain feeling and emotion or one of the nine rasas as well and tribaga which is a very feminine stance where the body is deflected at the neck torso and the knees is part of the odyssey classical dance if you have to speak about certain facts odyssey happens to be a classical indian dance which originates from the state of odisha it is a sensuous and lyrical dance form considered a dance of love it touches on the human and divine aspects of life and it also touches on the subtleties of life as well as the mundane Odyssey can be traced back to a dance style called Odra Magadha. This is mentioned as the southern eastern style of classical dance and one of the many varieties of dance in the Natya Shastra. So remember, these are some of the important facts with respect to Odyssey. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements about small satellite launch vehicle is our correct? SSLV is a three-stage rocket. The first and the third stages are incorporated with two solid propulsion systems with the second powered by the liquid engine. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to small satellite launch vehicle. When we look into the options, the first option says SSLV is a three-stage rocket. Yes, SSLV happens to be a three-stage rocket. And when we speak about the three stages, all the three stages have solid propulsion stages and there is no liquid propulsion stage. Since there is no liquid propulsion state, all the three are solid. The second statement is wrong. So what do we understand by small satellite launch vehicle? When we speak about small satellite launch vehicle, it will basically cater to the launch of the small satellites into the low earth orbit. So those satellites which weigh 500 and anything less than that can be put into low earth orbit with the help of the small satellite launch vehicle. And do note that when it comes to SSLV, all the three stages of SSLV will be solid propulsion system. What are the salient features of SSLV? It has low per kg launch cost. It has reduced turnaround time, increased production rate from industries, multiple satellites mounting options for nano, micro as well as the small size. So when we speak about small satellite launch vehicle, it is used for launching of small satellites into the low earth orbit. So it can be 500 kg or it can be 300 kg, so on and so forth. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to palm oil, Consider the following statement. The palm oil tree is native to Southeast Asia. The palm oil is a raw material for some industries producing lipstick and perfumes. The palm oil can be used to produce biodiesel. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 2 and 3 only. The first statement is wrong. That is because the palm oil tree is native to the hills of Kenya and not to Southeast Asia. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion happens to be IRARD. What is this? This happens to be an initiative of the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways where it intends to create a centralized accident database. What is a central accident database? As of now, whenever there is an accident, this particular data is not provided in one single database. It might be provided in multiple databases. So if we have to take the statistics, we do not have a single repository. As a result, the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways has come up with this particular initiative where it will be a centralized accident database 
to host and access all accident related data by various departments and stakeholders. So basically, this particular initiative was proposed to be launched back in the year 2019, but because of the COVID-19, it has been postponed. So what is this initiative all about? This will be one single database that entire country in case there are any accidents all the data will be collected in the single repository. How will this work? Let's assume for a moment there is an accident in one of the regions. So the minute there is an accident, you will have the police officers come to this place. You would also have the healthcare personnel coming up to this particular place. You will also have the road transport people who will come to this particular place. All these different sections or the different departments have their own data that they collect. So basically, they will collect the place where this accident has occurred, what time it has occurred, what is the type of collision that has happened, what were the weather conditions in that particular place. So each department will carry out a particular survey in that particular area. They will collect their own statistics on all this data that different departments have collected will be used by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and will be uploaded on one single database. So from this particular database, they would be able to use it as a feedback based mechanism. How will this work? So for example, if they have collected a particular data with respect to the road, they will see if there is a pothole. They will also see if there is any issue with respect to the road design or they will also try and understand if there are any lacunas in that particular area. So different departments take their data, they will put it on a database and if there is any deficiency from that particular area, from that particular accident zone, the same will be collected the feedback would be given to the relevant departments and ultimately whatever is the issue will be taken into picture. So every stakeholder department that is present in that particular area will give its input. There will be a deficiency which will be taken out and this will be given to relevant departments so that they can work out a plan chalk out a plan, create a blueprint in the near future. So what will be the significance of this particular program? Basically, this will be used by the concerned department to analyze the cause of accident, come up with a strategy, identify what is the area and rectify the black spot engineering interventions with respect to this particular scheme. So basically, IRAD is nothing but one of the initiatives of the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways to ensure that there is a centralized accident database. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.